Hi guys, Will here. Thank you for supporting this video. Before I start, I just want to thank everyone for their participation and for their support in the last video I posted on this subject. And I appreciate all the definite, <laughs> definite, uh, definite banter that went back and forth. I definitely feel like this is a safe space for people to express their opinions, and you guys definitely did that. So thank you guys for your support. Please like and subscribe. This video is my goal is to 1,000 subscribers. But also, thank you for all the definite uh, <laughs> definite remarks you guys had about my video. Definitely. Some good, some bad, and all's welcome here. This had to be my favorite comment right here. <laughs> now let me take the opportunity to clarify something. Because I feel like a lot of the abuse, you could say, from the last video came because there were a couple of key points that I don't think were understood. So let's clarify just a couple of brief things. One of the biggest reasons why I feel people were upset in my last video was because they were under the impression I was saying that the First Amendment doesn't exist or should be disregarded. And that's simply not true. The First Amendment absolutely gives one the right to express themselves in the means available. They can go into parks. They can use whatever public facilities or public resources are available. But the point is that all because you have the right to access does not make you immune to engaging in conduct that is harassing or disruptive. So, yes, the First Amendment applies to all if you do so without disturbing the peace. Now, this argument is typically applicable when this happens. Yeah, that's why there's members of... This whole building is public. The only thing they can be is publicly can be authorized personnel only. Which requires uh, legal signage and key card access. I have the right to f***ing record in public lobbies, vestibules, in any area that's not restricted, unless it's only if I'm not getting jurors and witnesses. I can record all of you and all of them. So this is where the key issue arises, which really is the problem that a lot of people have with these videos not all government owned buildings are freely open to the public while yes the general public is permitted to access certain areas for certain limited purposes an individual's right to access the property for news gathering purposes simply put it's limited and that's probably one of the biggest issues people have with these frauditors they say that they're news news journalists gathering content for some mysterious story for the first amendment but that's not what this is at all clearly this is nothing but harassing innocent people all right y'all here's some case law us v coquina from 1990 and i forgive me for the small print if you want to look it up online that's fine but this case was really the backbone on this argument because there's some very interesting points that this case mentions but one thing in particular stood out the government has the right to regulate first amendment protected free speech on its property to an extent determined by the nature of the relevant forum now that's going to raise a lot of questions in itself because there are issues involved with that but what do i mean so a big question arises from this and the question simply is is a government building considered a public forum? And the answer is, uh, that's difficult to ascertain. Because according to the case law, it helps us to appreciate that a public forum is uh, determined by, one, the government's intent in opening the forum, two, the restrictions placed upon the user's access to the forum, and three, the nature of the forum in question. So what does that mean? Well, going back to the case law, it very strictly says in that case, U.S. v. Coquina, that the government's ownership of property does not automatically open it to the public. And it's interesting because that's what the frauditors say. They say, hey, listen, I, I pay for this building. I can march around this building and do what I want. But again, you have to look at the regulations in the law that dictates whether or not a government building is a public, public forum or not. So let's think of a practical example of this. Let's think about City Hall. Now ask yourself, is the purpose of City Hall, the lobby, the hallways, to allow people to walk around, film people, and loiter, annoy, harass for no legitimate purpose? And the answer, simply put, is no. Logically thinking, the purpose is to go through security, walk through the hallways in order to reach private rooms and to obtain documentation, legal business, or whatever the case is. And frauditors, as we know, don't do that. And there's even two additional questions you could ask. You could also ask, are there restrictions placed 
on the auditors for filming on the premises? And the answer, again, thinking logically, is yes. You look in their videos, signs clearly ask individuals not to use their cell phones inside the buildings. And judges even sign orders saying that filming inside the courthouse is strictly prohibited. So, yes, fraudsters can't just walk into buildings and assume they can do what they want. Ultimately, if restrictions are placed on the form, that is constitutional. And the fraudsters don't seem to understand that if they are, there are limits to what they can do in the forum, they can be asked to leave. And then another question, what is the nature of the forum? And the answer is the forum is not used for public assembly or documentation of stories. If permission is obtained, maybe yes, with limits, one could film information in the lobby. But the nature of City Hall or really any government building is not of this sort. I mean, no one typically stands in a lobby and films in an anonymous way without IDing themselves or saying what their purpose is. That's not the, the nature of the forum. The nature of the forum, simply put, is to handle business, which frauders don't. You know, guys, let's not lose focus. Remember what the argument is. Is a government building that people say is paid by taxes automatically open to the public? And based on our deeper understanding, the answer, simply put, is no. If an individual fraud or, or excuse me, auditor <laughs> or not were to enter a public building and is strictly told or shown that there is a restriction to whether it's filming the sake of consumers' privacies or loitering and wandering a hallway just because a person can. This is a perfectly reasonable response to uh, these individuals trying to create scenes inside government buildings. And remember the case law, it backs it up. The assumption that an individual can just stroll inside a government building to film or try and enter without taking security measures because they aren't consenting to search and seizures, which is totally nonsense. This is just simply false because the government's ownership of the property, again, does not automatically make it public. But wait a minute. You can't trespass me from public. If I'm in public, I can do what I want. You can't trespass me. Uh, probably one of the most infuriating arguments. But again, Title 18, Statute Fee 3503 under Criminal Trespass. Section B clearly states that an individual remains in a building after notice against trespass is given by actual communication to the actor. Now, as we discussed in our last video, an individual can waive their constitutional rights by means of their conduct. So when these frauders go around these buildings harassing government employees, or harassing police, even harassing members of the public by means of their conduct, they can be trespassed from a building that's open to the public. I mean, it, it makes sense when you think about it logically, but the frauders don't want to do that. And subsection C of this statute even gives an interesting defense. It says it's defense if the premises are open to all members of the public and the actor complied with all lawful conditions. So frauders want to make it sound like in their videos that they're being attacked, 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 attacked for their conduct. But no, if they lawfully engage in business and engage fully in their rights and don't disrupt the peace, they can enter the buildings. No problem. And that's the big issue. That's where the real big argument is, because if a frauditor goes to a public building and an individual, an agent of the building says you cannot film and a frauditor complies, they have every right that is issued to them by the Constitution. Every right. But again, it's it. The frauditors don't want to understand that. They want to say that their rights are being violated and they want to file frivolous lawsuits. But that's just simply not the case. Unfortunately, this is another pandemic, so to speak. Nothing about this is going to change unless lawmakers really step up and really take action. You know, set the law down, help these frauders to understand, and appreciate that actions have consequences. But that doesn't seem to happen. But hopefully these frauders will become educated at some point as frauders, as we know, like to do an education work for government employees, but hopefully they're educated and understand that they are committing crimes and why what they're doing is not lawful. And hopefully, you know, they will come to appreciate that inevitably actions do have consequences. Well, guys, we discussed a lot in this video, but thank you guys for your support as always. Please continue to like, share and subscribe this video. And before we go, how about we just take a moment and just reminisce on a dear frauditor or a sovereign citizen who, <laughs> let's just say he thought he knew the law a little too much and ultimately the book was thrown at him. Is that fair to say? Uh, the defense would like to call the plaintiff state of Wisconsin to the stand.
don't want to do that. Oh, you don't? I changed. Um, come on. Um, 76. The 76 count. I just want to make. It says near Frame Park, so it is in there. But that was just one question I had. Oh, I love watching Dale Brooks. Anyway, thank you all for your support with this video. Please like, share, and subscribe. My goal is to get to 1,000 subscribers. And, and comment again in the comment section if you'd like to see a part three to this video. But until next time, 